Have you been feeling a little stuck in the prayer department? Maybe you've been scratching your head or a little tongue tied, not really sure what to say, not really even sure what the big deal is about prayer. Well, today we're going to dive into the word of God and see exactly what prayer is according to the Bible. My name is Eddie Ruiz and this channel exists for us to sharpen our biblical mindsets for us to love God and love others well. Thanks for joining me. You literally could have been doing anything else, but you decided to stop by and for that I am super thankful. And just like any new and healthy relationship, we can all agree that communication has to be at the heart of it because clear communication leads to clear understanding. And so I thought what better topic than to start with than communication with God through prayer, what it is, what it isn't, what it's for, who it's for, and what the Bible says about this specific topic. So grab your Bible, grab your note or your note app, and let's dive in. So first, as a way of defining what biblical prayer actually is, we really need to define what it isn't because in today's church, we see a lot of prayer being used and abused for all the wrong reasons, like the prosperity gospel. So here are three things that prayer is not. Number one, prayer is not transactional. Prayer isn't a way to get what you want from God, like some genie or some text message you send to a friend and they instantly respond to you and you get a little bit of those red receipts every time you say a prayer. It's not like a really great Chick-fil-A line where you know that the line is wrapped around the building, but you're gonna get your food in five minutes. Number two, prayer is not short term. Prayer isn't something that you do every couple of months, every couple of days, or when you happen to have time or feel like it. It's a time investment. It's a relational investment. And we even see in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Paul tells the church, never cease praying. So we know that it is a time investment. Number three, prayer is not about you. I know seems pretty offensive to not make prayer about yourself, but the reality is that biblical prayer is not centered on your desires, it's centered on God. Nowhere in the scriptures do we see evidence of anybody praying selfishly and actually benefiting from it. In fact, in James chapter 4, verse 3, James says this with regards to worldly desires. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. So what we see there is a clear example of why we can't center our prayer on ourself. All right. So now that we have a clear understanding that prayer is not transactional, it's not short term and it's not about you. We can dive into what prayer actually is biblically and the power that it holds in the life of the believer. And a good solid biblical way to define prayer is like this. Prayer is a proactive alignment to God's will. And I know the instant response is, well, if it's about God's will, what about me? And yes, you can make requests, big requests, small requests, bold requests, all requests in between. But the reality is that when the requests are not based in God's will for us, we become extremely frustrated because we don't see things come to pass the way that we thought they should which makes us take things into our own hands. And we know how that works out. Just asked Jonah in the Bible. But how do we know that prayer is supposed to be focused on God's will and not our own desires? Well, Jesus is teaching in Luke 11 and Matthew 6 about the Lord's prayer gives us some clues. Actually, not even clues. They give us straight lines of how Jesus prays himself. When Jesus is breaking down the tenets of effective prayer, in other words, the way that he prays, he starts like this, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, we approach God with reverence and respect, being aware that he is far greater than us in our desires. But the second line that Jesus tells us how to pray says, your kingdom come. In other words, we're putting God's will in front of our desires so that they can start transforming our desires from the inside out. Okay, so if prayer is a proactive alignment of God's will, how do we start implementing this into our lives in a way that's effective? So here's three proactive disciplines of prayer that you can start literally as soon as you finish this video and get them implemented into your life so that you can have a healthier prayer life. Number one, make time for it. 
separated, alone, without distractions. You need to make time, whether it's five minutes or three hours, it doesn't matter the time. It's not a numbers game. God isn't an arcade that the more tokens you put in, the more you're gonna get out, or a lottery. If you buy more lottery tickets, you're gonna get more from him. It's not about that. It's about the time spent in prayer because the time you spend now in prayer will lead to how you react to circumstances later down the road. Jesus perfectly exemplified this for us, by the way, when the Bible tells us that he used to go to desolate places by himself and spend time with God. And a good way to look at this is to say, I'd rather pray now than have to pray later, or even a step further in a fitness perspective, I'd rather work out when I'm healthy than have to work out when a doctor tells me to. You see, one operates out of health and the other one operates out of fear. So make time for it. Number two, desire God's will. So how do you make a discipline out of desiring God's will? That's pretty hard, right? Like if you think about it, you would tell yourself like, hold on a second, but what about me? What about my desires? What about my requests? What about the things that I want? And that's a good question. But the reality is that when your prayer life is rooted in your own selfish desires or the things that you want, maybe to you, it's like, this isn't selfish at all. This is, these are things that I need. These people, I want people to be healed. I want things to happen in my life. I want relationships to be restored. I, I need a better job. I want better things. Fine. But when they're rooted in your desires, really, there's no substance to them because we're not praying for God's will to be done. But how do you make a discipline out of desiring God's will? Well, we have a clue in scripture in Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So just based on that scripture alone, we understand that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness because we don't know what to pray for and he alone searches our heart to align us with God's will. And if we jump back to Luke 9, look at the promise that Jesus makes for us once we've aligned ourselves with God's will. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, it will be opened. So take yourself out of it. Ask God to desire his will. And Jesus promises us that if you ask, you will receive. If you seek, you will find. And if you knock, the door will be open because he's a good father. But if you ask for things that are outside of his will, you're going to get frustrated. And remember, his will for our lives is literally perfect. Even though we might not see it, we might not believe it, we might not trust it sometimes, sometimes we struggle with unbelief, and that's okay. But if we desire God's will, our lives will be shaped out for good. Does he care about what you're going through? Absolutely. But he is more concerned, or his priority rather, is your eternal state than your temporary state. And number three, pray for everything. There is no ask too big or too small or detail too big or too small that God is not aware of. God sees all things. He knows all things. He already knows what you need before you even ask for him, but he wants to hear from you. And when you pray about everything, you start to become even more accountable to the way that you're praying and the desires of your heart. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 tells us this, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus in other words when you pray about everything there is a peace that surpasses all understanding and it starts to change our mindset and our desires behind our prayer requests by bringing everything to God through prayer, he transforms even the desires you have. So now we know three ways to effectively implement prayer into our lives. Number one, make time for it. Number two, desire God's will. And number three, pray for everything. 
And listen, friends, I know that this stuff takes time. It takes time to start praying effectively. It takes time to walk relationally alongside Jesus and truly trusting the process. But remember, he's more concerned about your eternal state than your temporary state. But he never promised us that these things would be easy. That's why we need the Holy Spirit in our lives to really guide us in our prayer life and literally everything else that we do. Remember the promises that he made, Romans 8, 28. All things work for the good of those who are, love God and are called according to his purpose. That is a huge promise that we really need to hold on to. And don't forget either that the Bible encourages us to go to God often because if we don't we miss out on his will for us and again his will for our lives is so much better so 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 much better than we could ever imagine and we'll miss out on it if we just decide you know what i'm just not going to pray today we're going to be out of alignment with god's will in the same way that four tires when they're not in alignment with a car when you let go of the wheel they start veering left or start veering right it's the same thing with our alignment with god when the tires are aligned through prayer, we are going right down the path that we're supposed to be going to. God is a good father. In the same way that I wanna hear my kids all the time, I wanna hear what they're talking about, what they're jumping into, how school's going with them, what they're feeling, what their relationships are like. God also wants to hear from you as one of his kids. So pray and pray often. And remember friends, keep it biblical. And I'll see you in the next one.